Hey, it's Tim again. Welcome to episode 11 of Beginning Fabrication. So I made this little corner piece, um, it's not perfect but it's pretty decent. Uh, I added the, the folded edges so I can trim the, the skin off and then wrap this over so that it doesn't have a welded edge. Fun times! So I've got this corner chopped off and uh, the inside of it was pretty gross, it was all just super brown like that so I've given it a bit of a sand up and now it's got rust converter on it so let that dry and then once that's dried up I'll put some primer in there. This is the old piece with no real access into the back of it, it's pretty hard to, to panel beat. So. Considering the whole centre part of the bonnet's getting cut out for that scoop to get welded in anyway, I figured it's just as easy to make a new piece, so that's what I did. It just sits on there and then needs a little bit of tacking around. It's still a bit round on the front, but that's just because how I folded this over. So once it's painted inside, I'll, um, I'll neaten that up a bit. And then I've still got to trim off the folded edge that used to be part of this. Because to get the skin off I just ground along the edge to separate where it used to be wrapped around. Just to get it out of the way. And then I'll flip the bonnet and go around and grind out the spot welds and get this, get that extra lip off. This plus his bonnet's had a repair before so there's little welds that need to come off as well so, it's getting there though and also the guy that owns this bonnet wants to scoop longer so I've uh, just made like an extension which I'll get into place once everything's together Well, I think of it. I, I was going to film when I made this, but I, I just forgot. I just started working and got into it. But I'll show you how I did the folds on that little radius. Even though I used my fold roll, just do a piece in the vise and show you how I did that, and also how that radius gets bigger as it goes to the back. So I'll, I'll grab a bit of metal out of the pile, and, and uh, we'll have a go at making a, a fold with a with a varied radius on it. So I've just got a bit of scrap in the vise and because my piece of scrap is wider than the vise drawers, I've just got a bit of uh, quarter inch flat bar. I'll grab this and I'll just show you. So you can see the, the piece is wider than the jaws. The jaws are only six inches and this is, I don't know, eight I suppose. And then I've got this piece of plate in the jaws as well. So that'll just support these bits Where are we? that aren't in the jaws, it'll just help support them. So, uh, clip that back in there. So with the fold I'm just using a plastic hammer and I'm basically just going to push on it and then smack along the base where I want the fold. So we'll do that. Oh, and also if we're going to do a like a tapered radius. I'm going to sort of push it and tap it. I'm going to favour whichever side I want to have the bigger radius. So even though this is like a triangle which is probably the worst shaped piece of scrap I could have found but 
Do you want? So for something like that Tirana bonnet for example, you don't need to fold it right over, it just needs to really put a line in it. And so now you can just pull it back. And depending on how close to the bend you pull it, it will determine how soft that radius is. So we'll just come back to about there. And so if I want to straighten out this radius a little bit. Again, I can just use my plastic hammer. Got a bit excited there. So that's that bit of metal I had in there as a backing piece. And there's our fold. I don't know if you can sort of see how small that radius there is compared to how big it is on this side. So it does taper. This is quite a bit smaller. So that's all I did to make that bonnet piece. So it's a nice simple trick but I've used this a lot to make XY Falcon quarter panels and all sorts of things. I'd use this where I'll do a like a 45 degree fold and then just bend it, bend it back by hand to give it that nice smooth radius. So hopefully that's something you can use. And again, I just did this in the vise. Um, because I could, it's only a small piece, even that bonnet I could have just done in the vise, but I didn't. But um, it's something I probably didn't mention the other day was using pieces of metal to sandwich the, the job if your vise isn't wide enough. So, as my pea brain thinks of these things, I'll, I'll add more things. Hooray! <laughs> so I'd add a little uh, update on this. I know it's not finished, obviously, but that piece of bonnet that I made the other day is tacked into place now, and all the edges are folded under. So it lines up pretty well and um, I'm not worried about this part because this pencil line here is where the scoop comes down. So pretty much all of that's going to get cut away from there and all of this will get cut out. And, um, that's just that little piece that we did that radius on. I'm not sure whether the episode this goes in will be the same episode where we made that radius because it's a few days after I filmed that so if it's in the same episode well then it'll probably make more sense <laughs> alright that's it I thought seeing as we're getting a bit into this series now that it's about time I started adding uh, a couple more tools so I thought we might have a quick look at these shrinker stretchers uh, this is the first one I ever bought. I got it from Summit. It's a Woodward Fab. So it just came with the one machine, I suppose you'd call it, but then two sets of jaws. So one's a stretcher and one's a shrinker. But I see now places like Machinery House in Australia sell pairs of these so you don't have to swap the jaws over for like 230 bucks. So these are are cheap and really handy for um, making shapes like this <laughs> even though it's a pointless shape it's just a show for doing window frames or wheel arches tons of things I use these shrinkers um, so eventually I've still got this one obviously but I don't use it that often because I upgraded to a, a foot operated one that's got the two heads on it already so this one's copped an absolute flogging, um, but it's it's probably one of my most used tools when it comes to shaping panels and and uh, doing rust repairs, just because it's so versatile in what it can do. Even though it, you know it looks pretty flogged out, it 
it's uh, still a good tool. And then the latest one I bought, I don't know, last year is the this deep throat one. So obviously with these ones, that's as far in as you can stretch or shrink, depending on which sides, side of the machine you're on. But this one you can come in, I think it's like five and a half inches or six inches or something. Um, which means you can make roof skins and big compound panels much easier because you can shrink the edge that far into the panel or stretch depending on what you're making and again it's foot operated so I just thought I'd give you a little demo with some scrap metal of what these jiggers can do well, it's just, there's a couple of examples I can show you just on this car alone with using the shrinker stretcher um, this piece here, like that edge on it wasn't original, that's not original, I made that. And so I just got a flat piece and put a fold in it. And you can see how much I've curved it, just by shrinking it there and there, and then stretching it around here, so that's on both sides. Then also, this piece on the bonnet, that's not original either. So I just cut, I think it was a 30mm strip, just a straight strip, and then used the shrinker and the stretcher to actually curve it. Because um, even though I made a cardboard template, because you can see the, the way it bends there, and then when it came around here it ended up kind of looking like a hockey stick. So I'll, uh, I'll show you that you can not only shape 90 degree angle stuff, which I've got a scrappy test piece here, but we're also going to curve this straight piece. Just makes cutting, when you're cutting the pieces out to do a repair or a modification, um, cutting a curved piece, it gives you a lot of offcuts, so which is sort of handy I guess to have offcuts, but if you're trying to use the smallest amount of metal as you can, just doing straight cuts is uh, a lot more economical with your steel. I'll just um, give you a quick look inside here. There's top and bottom jaws. And this is the shrinker, obviously because it says shrinker, but also because there's a gap in the, uh, in the, in the jaws. Sorry about the camera work. So when I push the pedal, the jaws come together and then they squeeze in those gaps it actually gathers the metal up and, and shrinks it so you'll see just with the first step on this how much it bends the 90 degree piece that's just with one press you can already see it's, it's kinked it so if you needed to make something with a smooth radius you can just move it in the in the machine depending on what foot pressure you put in it also depending on how much of the piece you put in if you need to do something really tight say even tighter than that you'd start um, shrinking it just on the edge rather than pushing it all the way in so you're sort of shrinking the, the inner part more than the outer part I mean you can see that I've only been doing this for a minute or so and not concentrating on it very well but it's got a lot of shape in it already so now if I go back to putting it right in don't be dirty here's my camera work too <laughs> and then that's that's almost 90 degree bend now not that I need to make it for this but it's actually I've probably gone too far if I was using it for this car um, but yeah for window openings this thing's absolutely brilliant um, and then of course on the other side of the machine is the stretcher um, this side of this machine is pretty flogged out I have to admit I need to adjust it but it just does the opposite it, uh, clamps on the metal and then the two halves of each jaw pull apart so it actually makes that outer edge longer than it used to be so you can see we've got a pretty weird looking bit of, bit of metal there now 
um, with very little effort. And it's quite neat. You do get the jaw lines where the machine's actually clamped onto the steel, but they you can just sand them off. That's not a they're not an issue. Um, and also, if you needed to, you can you can shape it both ways, which you have to do a lot because I tend to do work on a lot of older cars which have compound curves all over the place. So that's got bends both ways now with the 90 degree fold in it. So I'll just grab this flat piece and we'll just pretend we needed this to have a curve in it. We shall start and do the, the fat end. So I've got to blow my nose, I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Let's, uh, you see I'm only, I don't know, 10 mil into the metal, maybe a little bit more. And I've just given that one, one squeeze. And it's already bent it, but it's still flat. It's not focusing on it, sorry about that. So we'll just keep going. And again, the main, reason I, I like doing this for repairs is it's just a lot easier to make a flat to cut a flat piece and then just shape it with this rather than trying to cut you know a hockey stick hockey stick shaped piece out of a, a sheet and it leaves it with weird weird shapes all over your your metal so that's the the flat piece getting shrunk you can see it's still flat, hasn't you know dished it or anything. So I uh, I do do this quite often as well. And if you need to go more, you can shrink more. But then you can actually come back onto this side and stretch stretch the opposite side. If you do find that you've actually accidentally shrunk it too far, I'll just show you. I guess you can you can actually just flip it over and then shrink it and it'll straightens it out again but we'll stretch the outside edge of this and it's, it's all, it does the same thing but if you needed to move it a lot you'd, um, you'd shrink and stretch the same piece but if you only need to do a soft sort of a curve then uh, just shrinking or stretching one side is enough. So with with stretching, I'll see if I can actually get it to do it. It is possible to physically tear the the metal if you stretch it too much. If you're trying to stretch a shape that's really tight. Um, these do have the strength in them, especially the four threaded ones to to tear the metal if you work the one area too far. Probably going to make a liar out of me now and not do it. Yeah, it's getting close I reckon. I mean not that you normally would be trying to tear the metal, it's just a thing that knowing that you can if you if you're not careful. It's good to know that you know, potentially you can ruin a lot of time worth of work by the last minute splitting the metal. Okay, so I stopped it before because I need to blow my nose again and this was trying to make a liar out of me but I did end up getting it to split. Um, but you can see how far that's curved. I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive and it's still flat. Um, and I went out of my way, I've worked that one area way more than I normally would. Um, if I had to make something this drastically shaped, I'd have shrunk a lot, a lot more of this, but you can see there's only a few shrinks in that and just a ton of stretching, which is not how I'd normally go about it. Um, that's just a little thing to be wary of that you can, the way these drawers work, it comes down. And you'll see the top one, you'll see a gap appear. 
that's what does the stretching and that's also what does that tearing but um just very handy tools to have and then the only other thing really to show you which i kind of explained before is that for example this one can only go that far in which is you know 30 mil 35 mil whereas with this sort of machine you can go that far in which is probably a good six or seven inches so this one i don't use as much because I, I like to keep this one fresh i suppose um, for doing bigger panels so when i need to make a roof skin or a door skin or something that has a real smooth um, compound curve like a, a bowl effect i'd use this so um, for any little little jobs like window frames and that kind of stuff, I just use the the blue one. Um, but then for people that are just getting into this, uh, well actually my brother just bought a pair of these from Machinery House, um, Heron Forbes, which I've got. I'll give him a plug because that's where I got this one from. So Machinery House, feel free to hook me up with all your gear. <laughs> um, yeah, so every now and then these come up on special, but I think even when they're not on sale, they're still affordable. Um, they're like a, less than $300 for two of these. So you not only get both sets of clamps, like jaws, you'll actually get two of the heads or the machines to go with it. Um, and this one again, uh, like my shear, I think I showed in another episode, just mounted on an old tyre. This is a I don't know, an HQ wheel or something, um, just so I can roll it around when I need to. Makes it nice and nice and portable, but it's still it's heavy enough that I can use this machine fine, even though it's not bolted to a bench. Um, but you can just these just come with two bolt holes in the bottom of them, so you can just put bolts in there and then just clamp the bolts in the vise and just use the vise to mount them. Um, or you can bolt them to a bench, whatever, whatever you have available to you. So I just wanted to do a just a quick rundown and a bit of a demo on these shrinker stretchers because they're a big part of my life here in the in the shed. So there you go. I hope that was of some use to you. I think most people probably know about these machines by now, but. Um, not everyone will, so I just thought I'd, I'd chuck it in there because if this series keeps going, well, I'm going to start having to add a few tools and uh, this is probably one of, well, it is the, the most used, I guess you'd call it a specialty machine because it's really only for sheet metal, um, whereas grinders and welders you can use on all sorts of things, whereas this is purely a sheet metal tool. Um, but it's probably the most versatile one as well. So, actually, another thing too, I might do a bit of a demo on this. So I'll I'll get a piece of metal and I'll come back. Now I just want to show, even with the the smaller shrinker, that I can put a a bit of a crown into this piece just by shrinking the edges. Again, it just depends how far you move in between each shrink and how hard you push on the, the pedal, how much crown you, you put in the piece. So this is really good for making cycle guards for a hot rod or guards for a motorbike um, or any sort of a curved patch panel. But you are limited purely because of the depth of the machine. But even that, after just, I don't even know if that was a minute. I'm not sure if you can see how. I'm sure it's got some dings in it because I was, I put pretty big gaps in it. If you don't leave gaps as big as I did, you won't get those puckers, but you could neaten that up in the pipe in the vise like we did with that other piece for the, for the Tirana. So 
that's what I thought we'd have a go at. I cut another piece, which is an oversized version of what I need for the other side of that Toronto engine bay. So instead of using the pipe in the vice trick, we'll, uh, we'll use this fella. So just gotta see which. All right. It's got the stretching jaws in it, so I'll change them over and be back in a sec. Uh, so just for the sake of it, I ran that first little piece we did through here, just to smooth off those lumps, and then just gave it a few second roll through in the English wheel, that thing there. I don't know if you can really see how that looks. I'm trying to get the, the shine on it. It's not perfect, but it's certainly Certainly not flat anymore. That was that first piece that I did in the, the small shrinker that had all the lumps and bumps in it. I don't know if you can see by being able to get up further into the, you can see those lines, because I was able to shrink further up the job, uh, just makes it smoother. All right, let's start shrinking this beast. Just starting by working my way around the edge. This piece doesn't need a lot of crayon in it. I'll show you just by small row that I'm doing now, how, uh, how curved this panel is already. So we'll keep going, see if we can get it right into the centre of this machine, even though we don't need to, it's just good knowing that we can. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the pedal either because I don't want to pucker it, pucker it in too badly because if I really stomped on it and gave it a big stretch it would increase, increase the metal more than I want it to It's starting to look like a turtle shell You can see it's still flattish in the centre, but it it has um has curved it all quite a bit. So I'm going to do another row now, and also, even though I think that's a funny shirt, <laughs> disclaimer is I don't condone ocean plastics, so I don't do it. So I generally like animals more than I like people. So Anything we can do to not hurt animals is, is good by me. So now I'm just going to come around the edge again and give it another little pull. Not as big as the first one I did. Just to try and keep the dish going because as I'm stretching it further in, it tightens up the edges again, so you need to go backwards and forwards a little bit, but I don't know if you can see, where are we? Ah, take a look, you can sort of see these lines. That's how far in I've come with the, the shrinker, as opposed to just this very little edge like on the other machine. That's starting to dome up pretty nicely now considering I haven't touched it with a hammer or the wheel so um, it's not too bad you can also when you do get lumps and bumps you can flatten them out just with the machine anyway so as long as you sort of keep an eye on on what it's doing you can 
keep it relatively straight. Another reason too why I don't like to press too hard, not only because it's better on the machine, but because when you're making something that isn't just a generic piece that is easy, you, I find just doing it in smaller increments I'm less likely to screw it up. Not that I haven't done that in the past, but that's how I learnt to <laughs> take my time. Even though, you know, this is literally only going to take a few minutes. And I'm not exactly working hard. Even though I'll probably sound tough, but that's just because I'm so snotty. So that's probably getting pretty good now to where we need it to fit on the car because it doesn't need to have a lot of, of uh, actual dome to it. Let's grab my ruler. Okay, that was exciting viewing. So you can see how much dish there is in that now. Both ways. Even if we put it on the, the top, you can see the ruler flows reasonably smoothly over that. There's not even really much of a flat spot in the middle anymore. So, that was just another example of this different shrinker stretcher. These ones are a bit dearer. I think they're normally about 450 bucks. I think that's what I paid for this one. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I use these tools a lot and if you're going to get into sheet metal work, um, when the time comes that you can get stuff like this, I'd certainly recommend it because it it not only opens up a whole heap of doors for the possibilities, it just makes your life so much easier and it lets you create, lets you create stranger shapes out of less pieces of metal because obviously if you can make a panel out of one piece of metal it's going to be quicker and easier to work than one that needs to be put together like a jigsaw puzzle. So, I think that'll do for this example anyway. That's come up pretty good considering I only used the shrinker. So hopefully that gives you just another idea of some of the tools you can get and what they do. So that's it. So just out of interest I thought I'd pop this piece in and see if I was on the right track. And, uh, even though this side's done, I, um, I can't really get into this side too well because the brake booster and everything is still in the way, but it fits anyway. <laughs> so that's, um, that's worked pretty well. Well, that's it for episode 11. I, uh, I hope you weren't too overwhelmed with how exciting it was. Uh, and again, let me know if there's anything else you want to see and hopefully see you next time. All right, cheers, bye.